Hey, it's Mike, and this is the gear guide on the substreet.com in the film lab. Three titles! This is episode two of our Tungsten Package series that our really good friend and really talented DOP, JP, used to light myself inside something that looks a lot like this, the elevator set for our friend Matt Brown's elevator movie. We shot a bunch of behind the scenes footage where he talked about what lights he was going to use to light a set like this and why he was going to pick the ones that he did. So this is that. Enjoy. Roll camera. Uh, camera speed. Mark it, please. Shot one, take two. And Frank. And action. Door. What are, what are we looking at here? We're looking at trying to get this thing lit to look somewhat photographically interesting. So what we've got here is a key light. It's a little tiny key of flow, tungsten balanced, for a key light on Monsieur over here. It's on a dimmer so that it can be controlled so that we have just the right amount of light. Above him, it's more of a backlight than a key light. It's just to give a nice sense of that overhead lighting that you see in elevators, but not too overpowering. It's very soft and gentle because it's a Kino, and that's a very good light to use for a soft light. You don't have to put diffusion on it. It's really, really well balanced. It's extremely soft, so it's very good. And we have another one for this actor standing right over here. So for his backlight, same idea. We just wanted to have the two of them. And for his key, we had to hide the light over here because we couldn't have a stand in the shot, so we had to hang it over and around the back so that we could actually have it in, in, in the elevator and key lighting on him. This one's also on a dimmer. So he has a nice key light on the side of his face, nice backlight over here. When he turns this way, he's still getting some of the fill up on that. Right in the top corner over there, we have a little splash light, which I'm using, and another one on that side, just to give a little bit of a highlight of a splash on the back over here, just to make it look a little bit interesting. Um, as if there's pop lights that are maybe a little too close or a little too strange, just to give it a bit of a dynamic break up the background. I'd like to show you all the weird stuff around the set so I can sure. show you how difficult that was. Let's take a look. All right, so we're going to go this way. So first of all, on the outside of the set, as he's walking in, we had to have some light to justify where he's coming. Right. Some light to say, well, you know, he's coming in from a lobby. So we had this big light, it's also a Kino Flow. Um, to make it even softer, as if it's just ambient light on him completely, mm -hmm. we wanted to make it even softer. So I put some 216, which is basically a diffusion gel. It diffuses the light even more. It really creates this wraparound light, very soft, gentle backlight. And we have a mix of tungsten and daylight bulbs. Uh -huh. This one. Okay. So I wanted to make the light slightly different from this space outside the elevator as opposed to the inside space of the elevator. Inside right. space being a lot warmer, more tungsten. The outside space not quite as friendly as that environment. We had a lot of problems with, you know, the set had to be made with flats. It had to be stabilized. So we were very limited in where we could actually place our lights and how close we could place them. So what we did. Rigged up the Kino flow with the bag on the end to counterbalance the fact that the weight of the light is putting a lot of leverage strain on the falcon point at the top. Mm -hmm. So we had to make sure that it was evenly balanced to be that high and be safe at the same time. And again, we had to keep them really close to the set as possible without losing too much of the actual light. Hmm. And. Uh, the great thing about the set is that it has walls that can move. So at any point when we jump in for coverage, we can actually just move one of these walls out completely and we can just move the lights out and put them right back and we've lost no time. So it's a lot better, a lot easier than trying to shoot in a real elevator where it's very tight and crammed. There's no way to do that. The only way to do it is with a, with a set and it's been great to have this design. But for the next shot, we're going to be on another door. It's oh, yeah, yeah. So, it's so a good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. part of the process. I want to make it look good. <laughs> I didn't get all the way out. It's too bad. My, uh, my step person sag card is So basically, we want a really, really bright light from this otherworldly thing beyond the realm of the, uh, of the elevator. 
So we've got two 2Ks, the biggest lights we could get, and we're going to turn them on at the same time, and we're going to blast them through a, a silk on a frame, and a little bit of a CTO, which is color temperature orange, just to give it a bit of a warmer feel compared to the feel of the light inside the elevator, which was a little cooler. And then hopefully that will simulate this really dramatic difference. And then once he gets sucked out of the elevator, the lights kind of flicker and then go off, hopefully. And that'll be how it works. So we're going to show you kind of what it looks like. It's getting really bright. It's something like this. Wow. And then... Do you have a, a china wall that I could use just to give an eye light? So right now, I'm just trying to get a nice little eye light in his eyes because we're going for a medium close-up. And china balls are really nice and soft and they give a very bright, a very big source of light without affecting the actual key light right on his face. Mm -hmm. And it'll just reflect in his eyeballs really nicely. Mm -hmm. You might even see in my eyes. Right. But our, yeah, it hardly affects the key light that I've set, but it just adds a little bit of a reflection to add some nice little highlights. So basically we've uh, done a reposition so we're on the other side but we couldn't get our key lights hanging over because the door has to be working for the elevator and we couldn't hang them over this side because we don't have enough grip arms and stuff so we had to bring everything inside and tuck it as tightly to the wall as we possibly could and still get the key light for the one actor, eye light and the second key light so that everybody's lit and it's just on the edge of frame so that nothing is, is actually visible in the shot and hopefully it'll work.